Right guys, as promised in my Facebook group, I have just made a bodysuit. Uh, this is a fabric that my child picked for me to wear. He insisted I get it. And you know what? I am not disappointed. It is adorable. So anyway, this is mainly made on the overlocker or serger, depending on where you live. And it's also got some plastic press snubs. So if you would like to see how to make this, please stay tuned. Okay. So this is my overlocker. It is industrial and it has a rotary motor. So you are going to hear it this whole time. This pattern has a neckband, two back pieces, two sleeves, and one front piece. And that is literally all there is to this. So what we're going to do first is we're going to sew the back pieces together at the longest edge. Now I'm just going to use my overlocker. Uh, a four thread would be better, but this one only does three or a three overlock with a stitching line. So I'm just going to use my foot pedal to lift up my foot. Um, and then we're just going to stitch down. Now I'm just chopping a little bit off to make sure that it's all the way to the edge. So this part here is the chopper. And sitting straight on you can see exactly where you need to cut. I'm also stretching it a little bit. Now some people are probably going to object to me doing this, but because it's a three thread overlock, I don't want it to overstretch and then snap something. Uh, which has happened to me in the past, so I just give it like a little bit of a stretch. Nothing major. Okay, so this is our front bit. So now I'm just going to take my back and my front and join them together at the side seams. So I'm going to join this here, and then I'm going to grab them and make sure that I've got the right seam. So that one there. And they should match up beautifully like that. So again, I'm going to pop it under. Now you want to keep your fingers out of the way of this. Industrial overlockers you can usually pick up quite cheap. I usually see them on Marketplace for like three and four hundred dollars, which sometimes is cheaper than domestic. The problem you'll have is do you have enough space for it? Because it's built into this entire table. But I wouldn't have it any other way. I love my overlocker. Right, so that's one side, and then again, snip off your tails, and then I'm going to do the other side. Don't lose your neckband. You can make your neckband out of a different fabric, but because this is a cotton spandex, it's plenty stretchy enough. So, join up the bottom, I'm just going to give it a bit of a stretch. You'll also notice that I have needle, like pins nowhere in sight. I don't use pins when using the overlocker. Alright, then we're going to come up to the top and we're going to do the shoulder seams. So I'm going to go one, like that, trim it off. You should always leave a little bit of a tail with an overlock or surging, depending on where you live. I call it overlock and overlocking. And then again, trim it off. So now it's a complete item. So I'm gonna take the neck band and I'm gonna put it right sides together and I'm gonna overlock the short edge here. Like that. Trim off those tails. Now I'm going to fold it so it's wrong sides together so that we can see it. Now, if you want to, you can overlock this together. I'm not going to. I'm going to turn that off for a second. So, what we want to do is we want to fold it wrong sides together and I want to find the opposite edge so I've got my finger at that join and I'm pulling it so it's opposite so that I can find the opposite edge and grab a wonder clip or a pin but I, again I don't like bringing pins near the overlocker 
So that should be the opposite edge. So that's just to tell me where I need to mark it. Now, if you're new to sewing, I would go to a sewing machine and right on the edge, sew this together. But I don't feel like doing that. I've made plenty of these. So I'm gonna start where the join is and I wanna make sure that the animals are right sides up when I hold it like this. So this edge where my thumb is needs to go on the side of the fabric and I'm joining that back center seam with this seam in the neckband. We want it all to line up. Now this I'm going to do very very slowly but I want to fold it perfectly in half, slot it under, overlock a little bit and then I'm going to find the center front, so I'm going to join the seams and there's the center and I'm just going to chop a little triangle. So the idea is, is where that clip is will now join up where that triangle is. So you can do that. I'm going to do it. It's going to make life a little bit easier. So join, join, join. And so now when you stretch this, that should all fit perfectly and I've twisted it the wrong way. See? This is why we check. Right, so I need to stretch this out like this to make sure that this neck collar band is going to be the same stretchiness all the way around. And then I'm just going to sew all the edges together like this. Then I'm going to re, I'm going to twist all of this around and I'm going to take off that clip because it's now in my way. And again, we just want to fold all of this together, fold it, fold it, join it up there. And I'm just stretching that slightly so that everything sits flat. When I get to the edge, I just run off the edge, leave a tail and cut it off. So now you just want to check and make sure that your band, see I've got a little um, giraffe head sticking out and they're up the right way. So you want to make sure that you don't have any missed spots and it should sit in beautifully. So that's our neck band. All that's left to attach now is our sleeves and our elastic. So I'm going to take a sleeve and fold it right sides together like that and a uh, no I want to make sure it's perfectly even and then I'm going to pop it under give it a little bit of a pull because from experience if I don't my overlocker thread snaps we don't want that it's the only thing holding it together so I'm just using my hands as like pins basically because I don't want to actually bring pins near the overlocker. It will mess stuff up and this one takes a very long time for me to re-thread. You need tweezers and everything. Alright, so I'm going to just chain stitch the next sleeve straight in after it. You don't want to stretch the sleeve heaps, but I just want to do it a little bit to make sure that my stuff doesn't snap later on. And then we can chop apart the sleeves in the center like that. You can chain stitch almost anything. So now I want to turn these right sides out, chop off that. I think my husband just got home. I hear a car. All right, so there's our sleeves. Now, the way I put in sleeves in this is the same as when I do a shirt. So I'm going to keep this part inside out, and I'm actually just going to take this sleeve and feed it through the sleeve hole. And then I want to take that bottom seam and line it up with the side seam of the bodysuit, like so. 
and we're going to stick it under the overlocker so you kind of come in at an angle when doing stuff like this and then again we're just going to stretch them now if you're new to sewing you might need to um mark the center like we did with the neck band so that you know how much to stretch everything or you might just like to wing it or if you're like me you've made a heap of them and I'm not sure why you're watching this video because you already know what to do right that's one arm in if you want to check it you can just pop through the other side and have a look and then we want to do the same to our other sleeve so again I'm gonna just push it into the armhole and then match up that bottom edge I never realized how noisy my overlocker is I've usually got music playing and I don't really hear it so again lift up the foot so this has a foot lift which I love I love foot lifts and knee lifts and things they are just amazing so I'm gonna sew a little bit and then I can start stretching and I always have the sleeve on top. That up, there's something else that's very important. Always have the sleeve on top. Because it's easier to see and quicker to sew. So now, if we turn that through, it pretty much looks like a bodysuit now. So now we just need to add our elastic. So I have pre-cut it. Here's my elastic here. And I'm going to sew it to the underside like this. Lift up the foot. I'm going to slot it all the way in. I'm going to do a little bit because that's going to hold on to it. And then I get to stretch the elastic. Now I'm trying very hard not to overlock and cut the elastic. So because of this, it sometimes takes me a bit longer to get onto this. So you just want to go slowly. And it does take skill to learn to do this slowly on this particular industrial overlocker. I used to be really bad at slow. It's like all or nothing. But it's like the, the clutch of a car. You get used to it. That's one side. So you just stretch it. It's just going to give a little bit of stretch. It's nothing too dramatic. You don't have to pull the elastic at full capacity. Um, it's just going to stop it from gaping when you're wearing it, basically. So I'm going to grab the other one. Pop it under. And I'm not going to start stretching until I know it's sewn a little bit so that it will grab it for me and then I'm going to join this edge and hold it stretch it out until it's even and then pinch it which you can't see me do, I'm going to pinch it and then I can just work on that area make sure that the fabric's right at the edge of the elastic so we're actually still stitching something and then again I'll readjust go to the edge, match up that edge and then pull on the elastic again. Get it right and nice and close to the edge. So I'm not trying to chop off too much of this. Now you can do the elastic on a machine, like a, a normal sewing machine. I'm gonna get my normal sewing machine out in a second and we're gonna do that to flip it over and top stitch it because my overlocker doesn't also do top stitching. You can only overlock with this thing. Right, run off the edge. Trim off those tail parts. And so now we are ready to move to a sewing machine. All right, so I am now on my domestic machine. I do actually feel a little bit awkward. I think I need to move it all slightly over here bring you guys with me all right so i am on stitch 
six on this machine, which is a dotted zigzag that is specifically designed for stretchy fabrics. So we're going to go to the elastic that we just overlocked on and we're going to tuck it under one rotation. And then I'm going to top stitch. So I've just got some gray in this machine at the moment. So it's going to zigzag and stitch. So it's a dotted zigzag. And what this is for is this helps elastic be stretchy. So I'm just going to make sure that it's tucked right on the edge. And then stitch all the way along this edge. I'm going to stop each section. You could also clip this if you wanted to. I'm not really stretching this very much. I'm more just holding it flat. Tuck that last bit under. And I'm also stitching fairly close to the edge. That's a little chopper thing I have there. So now it's given us this kind of dotted zigzag. And I'll do the same to the other side. And it's also holding down the elastic underneath so you won't see it from the outside. I'm going to cop down. Tuck it under. And I want to get fairly close to the edge. I don't want to run off the edge. That's not what we're after. Um, you also don't want to be too far in because then you won't stitch the elastic either. I've got it on a width of a four for my zigzag and a length of four. So it's going to be nice and long. There's not like a gazillion stitches. And again, the last little section, tuck it under. Right. Chop that off. I forgot to bring the snips with me. So now we've done that edge. So I am going to go back to a normal straight stitch. I've also got a stretch needle in, which is something I forgot to mention. So then I'm just going to tuck that up and under like so. And I just want to stitch across. So I'm keeping my stitch length at four so it's nice and long. And I also can see that because it's stretchy, it's going to have a little bit of issues going through all those layers on the edges. So I'm just going to help it through a little bit. Now we don't have any raw edges there. I love that little cutter. It is very handy to have a cutter. If I ever, buy, if I ever have to buy a new industrial machine, uh, it's going to have a cutter. That's the only thing I wish I knew about before I purchased mine. All right, so then we're going to do the same to this size. I'm going to tuck it under and under. And what this is doing is this is where our press studs are going to go. So it's giving us enough kind of oomph to hold it without adding a bunch of interfacing right at your crunch. And hiding all the raw edges because we don't like raw edges either. Right, I will come and better chop those off in a minute. You get the point though, trim your tails. So now from the outside, that looks lovely. It's about the same width, so it's going to clip together nicely. So the only thing left to do on this entire thing, apart from add the press studs, is hem our sleeve. Now, a couple of ways you can do this. I am just going to use a nice long straight stitch. You could also, if you've got one, which I don't or I would have done for you, put a twin needle and then add a second thread and it will stitch two beautiful lines. But unfortunately, I don't want to have one here. 
So I'm just going to tuck it under like this. And from the top, I'm going to stitch. I'm going to back stitch. And I'm using the edge of the foot as a guide for how much I'm tucking under. So I'm just going to tuck it under and stitch a bit. Stopping with the needle down if you can. If not, manually crank it down. And then again, I'm just tucking it under and stitching it down. I can eyeball this pretty well because I've had some practice, but you are welcome to put pins in if you need to, to make sure it's going to sit lovely for you. Now it is pretty important to use a stretch needle uh, because otherwise you will wreck the stretchy fibers that are in your top. And then that's when you start getting those little white kind of looking hairs. They're actually the elastic fibers that have snapped because they used the wrong stitch, uh, wrong needle, sorry. So now I'm just going to do the same to this. I'm just going to tuck it under. You can actually tuck it under like this so you can see it and then just pin it. But I'm not using pins, so that's not really a thing. Foot down, stitch, back stitch. I always start and stop at a seam so that the back stitching is less obvious. Something you may wish to consider. Stopping with the needle down, readjusting, and make sure that you pay attention to this because sometimes it slips, so it's not where you left it. Needle down, just keep twisting it around. Shuffle that back. Last little bit. When you get back to the start, back stitch. All right, so all I need to do now is trim those tails that I can't get with this cutter. And then we're just going to install the snaps. You don't ever see these while you're wearing them, so it probably doesn't matter. But I'm still going to pick green that matches because that's who I am. So we're going to come here, and this is how we want it to clip on. Right, so I've got the male part in first, which I can feel is a bit loose. There we go. So what I want to do is you can do it a couple of ways. You can either line it up like this. I'm just going to put two snaps because I put three in the last one and I just feel like it's a lot. So I'm going to stab through both the layers and kind of wiggle it around to really make that hole known. And then I'll do the same on this side. Like that. Now, this is the front, so we're going to push this into that hole. And I haven't put one in yet, so I'm going to grab one of these and set it into the machine. It is technically a machine. All right, I'm going to pull the fabric down over the point, stick it under, and then just press. Now, if you're not, if you're using China brand um, press snaps, it's totally fine. But you'll just have to know that you'll have to put it on here and then press down because the the Chinese ones that you buy on eBay and stuff that don't fit in the machine like that, then the wrong they're slightly the wrong size, so they fall out. So I've used them plenty of times before in the past. So I'm not saying don't use them. I'm just saying. Be conscious of that. So I'm going to put in the other half and hopefully we'll be able to see where our holes are. So this one we actually want to go from the back to the front. So I can see that hole quite well actually, that was surprising. And so I'm going to grab one of the, uh, the females and push it into the snap holder like so. Sit it down. Squish it. Now, obviously, this green doesn't match perfectly, but it also doesn't matter because they had your crutch and you wear pants and nobody sees them but you. So push that one on. Grab one of these. Slot it up. Put it on. And... Voila. Then, before you walk away from your machine, make sure they snap together. 
because sometimes, and especially with the off-brand versions, you need to maybe push them a little bit harder because they're not quite set. But as you can see, they join together because I lined up the holes before I started. And that is your bodysuit done. Um, I hope this was helpful. I hope that you try one. They are super comfortable and I'm a little bit obsessed this winter. So you'll probably see a lot of this. All right, guys, until next time. Bye-bye.